Our master buff is tiled up and looking good. Our tiler helped us to make nice shelves. And Lin realized the childhood dream of finally having a tower in the middle floor. <laughs> it is your dream, hall. currently week 6 of our renovation journey. Time flies. Our tiling work started in week 4 and today we'll be sharing with you some progress updates. We explained in an earlier video why we opt for tiles instead of vinyl for health reasons, so do check out that video if you missed it. Anyway, our tiling works are quite substantial. We are overlaying the kitchen and both bathrooms and laying new tiles for our walk-in wardrobe and sleeping room. We also kept the nice HDB tiles for our living and dining room and there's also an episode on how we elevated it with marble gum. That means that our entire home is tiled except for our untouched budget study. Over the past few weeks, we learned quite a lot of new things and the Renault regrets this is starting to accumulate. We thought it would be good to share some of our findings that we wished we knew or had prepared beforehand. Starting with floor traps. Over the months of Renault prep, the nice floor trap with a towel is something we've always wanted but not able to find much info online or from our ID. Many homeowners can't share the end product but not the actual mechanism. We asked around and many were not sure too because their ID or contractor worked their magic. We also saw that some had versions where it is difficult to maintain and requires hooks to lift up the towel. And so, over time, this mini dream of ours quietly slipped away. But as tiling day progressed, a box of the white, ugly, tripophobic <laughs> ones were delivered to our house and the moment we saw that, we were like, this would definitely be top on our list of random regrets. We frankly felt quite alone trying to figure this out all by ourselves. We thought that at the very least, they could have gotten us some modern looking ones instead of these white tripophobic ones. We chatted with our tiler and he advised us to go buy something nicer and you'll see if you can install them for us. Anyway, we took actual measurements, we went shopping and finally found a shop selling this and now understand how it works. They only sell one Atas high quality version that was designed for what we want and it costs $168. What? There is another version that looks pretty decent, it doesn't work that way but we flipped it over and we had an idea. So we brought two big and two small ones home, our plan is to get a towel to cut a small piece of towel and attach it here and that's it. Likewise, same idea for the larger one, cut a piece of towel and attach it to the metal plate. If that doesn't work, we will ask the towel to cut the towel and simply place it in. Other than looking good, this floor trap also helps with order and pest control. Only when water flows through this will this mechanism be triggered. You can also easily unscrew this for cleaning purposes. The smaller one has a grill to trap hair. 
and this is easy to remove and clean and a similar mechanism. So hopefully this mitigates sand flies that spawn relentlessly and the smelly gush, if you know what I mean. So our toweler really managed to install them and it's looking so beautiful. He managed to slice a nice slab of towel on the inverse side. And yes, the mechanisms all work perfectly as explained. The toweler confirmed that no hacking was involved and this was simply overlaid. Really appreciate his kind efforts to make this possible. Number 2. Towel trimmings. It was only at the end of toweling day 1 that our toweler suddenly asked if we prepared something for the ages. Being swakus, we did not know what he meant until he gave an example in the kitchen and we understood it to be the opiang trimming for adjoining towels and concrete walls. We asked our ID for help and he got the toweling contractor to buy some. We did some quick searching online and saw that there are slicker ways to do it, such as those metallic right angle ones that look more modern, especially if you have gold or rose gold hardware and fittings in your bathroom. Even for shower curbs, there are versions where it looks really good. In fact, more detailed designers and towelers may consider mitered edges, which are essentially 45 degree cuts for perpendicular towels. It's too late for us to change anything now, but you still can. Honestly, this seemed like an uninformed afterthought and on socials we saw that this was on the radar of more meticulous planners. We wished we knew this earlier on so that we could prepare better or requested our ID to do something nicer. As we've removed the door frame of the master bath and we'll be replacing it with a glass swing door, we also felt something is not quite right with the adjoining tiles and walls for the entryway. We can't possibly be living with ages that keep peeling off over time and we found it strange that they didn't understand our concerns. Any idea on how we should solve this? Leave your suggestions in the comments down below. Yeah, perhaps this whole walkway should also be taught as it's technically part of the toilet since the door swings outwards. Number 3. Step down shower or curb. We always wanted to overlay our toilet and also have a step down shower instead of a curb but gave up early on because our ID explained it is not possible for BTOs. We didn't really understand why and thought to open this up for discussion with some high level cross section illustrations. Firstly, this is the original. Basically, our BTO came with a slope down into the bathroom. As we all know, new HDB BTOs have a 3 year restriction on removal of existing wall and floor tiles. So if you don't like the look and feel of the tiles that came in the flat, the only option is to overlay new tiles which then levels the bathroom and the outside floor. The most straightforward and practical way is then to install a shower curb. Lately, we have seen many homeowners who manage to overlay tiles and have a step down shower and we are still not sure how it was achieved. We spoke to our ID who mentioned two methods which may or may not be in line with the guidelines. For the first method, the bathroom is overlaid entirely and the third layer of tiles will be laid on the dry area, creating a step down shower. If homeowner wants a curb to prevent water from flowing out to the dry area, a fourth layer may even be laid. Just like a kue lapis. <laughs> we are swaku, so not sure if this is allowed because HDB has a lot of funny grey area guidelines on floor thickness and whatnot. So this is not a random advice. Please check with your ID or contractor professional. The second method probably not allowed for PTO because it involves hacking of original bathroom tiles to create the step down shower. Maybe there's a method that we're not saying here. If you're planning to do a step down, maybe more time is needed to crowdsource on this front. Did anyone manage to do a step down or double step down in a BTO using new tiles? Share some tips for other future homeowners in the comments section down below. Number 4. Recess or embedded U-channels for shower glass panels We invited the contractor to our home to consult on our walk-in wardrobe glass door and he took a look around our flat and gave us tips on things we never once thought about. He said since we are getting the frameless kind of glass panel, we could have gone for a recessed or embedded U-channel. As Swakus, it was the first time we heard that term and went to do a little digging. This is perhaps the best installation example we found on YouTube. Credits to Schluter Deco SG. Surely there is a similar localized method, so check it out with your ID. Basically, there are a couple of ways to mount a frameless glass shower screen where the glass meets the wall or curb, either using clips or U channels or a combination of both. Of course, the laziest and easiest way is to simply use exposed U channel or clips. And as most of us are familiar with, usually this silicon cock will turn moldy over time. However, a recessed U channel will give a more refined finish, and the absence of silicon cock means lower mold maintenance. Number 5. Positioning of tiles. It was only after our kitchen tiles were overlaid that we realized the tiles were not centralized visually in the middle once the cement bases are up. Perhaps we should have requested our tiler to keep this in mind from the start. Maybe there is a method to start tiling from the visible area from the center line instead of starting from the corners of the kitchen, which would have been eventually hidden by the cement base and carpentry anyway. Same goes for this column of tiles in the common bath. We would have preferred the 60 by 60 nice big tiles to be where the shower set would be. Of course, that would require more effort on the towelers part to cut out two holes in the center of the towel, but it would look much nicer than having a grout line cut through the outlet. 
Number six, preparing corner shelves. We did not know that such things existed until our toddler told us. Essentially, these are off-the-shelf shelves that you can buy in advance and pass to your toddler. You will be able to cut a precise slit on perpendicular tiles and embed it at the corner. As we didn't prepare this, we requested for the toddler to cut two pieces of wall tiles, place them back to back and fill them up with grout. We think that the result looks great and it's definitely better than nothing as we do not want to use the scruffy looking stainless steel racks. At the end, we will also explore epoxy grouting and see if this can be beautified even more. Here are some other bonus tips relating to tiling works that you may find useful. Testing of leapage. Shout out to Living with Sun channel where we first learned about this tip. Leapage is a term used to describe differences in height between edges of tiles. A simple way to test for leapage is with any cut. Just run it along floor or walls from one tile to another. If the tiler is skewed, it should slide smoothly without ever getting caught. We close an eye on a few that borderline passed, but there are some pretty bad ones that we could feel with our feet. Not sure what to do because sometimes fixing it will create even more problems in surrounding tiles and will just delay our reno process. We came across this video that day about new tools to help toddlers with these issues. Not sure why the industry in Singapore is still using backdated methods to do things. If only they invested in such tools, it would make toddlers' life much easier as well. Aligning skirting and tile grouts. This is something we are thankful that our toddler did without being told. He was consistent in ensuring that the grout line matches and flows from the skirting to the flooring. Some homeowners have shared that their toddler was not bothered about such details. So if you are on site, do take note of this and point it out to your toddler or ID. Oh yes, we have eventually decided to remove all the vinyl skirtings with the wood design in the living and dining room. Instead, we will be using the exact same HDB tiles to make new skirting to match the flooring and our team. Next up, we will also be doing away with the wooden laminated door and door frames. Removing unwanted fittings and plumbing stuff. We realized that the door stopper in the master bath was not removed and the towel actually towed around it. Eventually, we had to hack off the towel to remove the unwanted door stopper and get him to re -tow. In the common bathroom, there is a weird U-shaped outlet thingy that is meant for the water heater. Likewise, the towel towed around it and the result is quite bad. Eventually, this would also no longer be a U-shape once we install the water heater, so toweling around the U-shape right now does not seem quite right. We are asking our ID if we could send the plumber down to cut away the U-shape and temporarily cap them into something like how the bow folks did it. Only after that can we get the toweler to retow nicely. Meticulous planning of cement base. So cement bases are getting less popular nowadays, but we decided to go ahead with it from a practicality standpoint for our carpentry. It was only after our meeting with our carpenter that he highlighted to our ID a couple of incorrect measurements for the cement base, which thus requires it to be hacked off. That doesn't sound good because even as swagus, we could tell that it would possibly damage the flooring beneath the cement base. And we were right, and found a few spots where the tiles were chipped off. However, what was most painful is this area around the curved edge. Our ID's plan was to do a cement base first and only after discussions with the carpenter would he request the toddler to hack it away into a curved shape. Now that it has been hacked, our flooring feels and looks different. Not sure if chemical washing could salvage this but stay tuned and we'll share the updates with you. Well, this seems like a long video and we'll stop here for today. Thanks for watching to the end.